What is going on, everyone? You know, uh, the Eagles game, it killed me. It, it definitely killed me, and I just kind of want to take a look at this game now, even though it's still fresh. I had a, uh, some moments here to <sighs> just take it all in. Take it all in. So, you look at Josh Adams, and the dude only gets seven carries. And three of those carries were on the first drive. Doug Peterson lost the run game. We had 14 total run plays, and that includes Carson's that, you know, doesn't really count, in my opinion, to legit run plays. So I, I had a feeling that we were going to lose that if we were down, and that's exactly what happened. Doug Peterson found a way to lose the run game. Him and the coaching staff, they have to be better. There's no creativity in this offense at all. They they struggle to get guys going. And a little bit goes on Carson Wentz, too. He's not playing up to par. He's not playing up to the Carson Wentz standard that we expected him to from last season. We have to remember the injury is a huge issue, though. You're overcoming leg ligament problems that doesn't just get fixed w without time. And it's it's been one year. One year. That's it. That's not a long time. You can see he's struggling. But for the people out there that say he's not the guy, he's not the guy, uh, here's my counter argument. You're not going to sign him? You're not going to sign him to a contract and then you got to go, go searching for a quarterback again? Is that your other option? He's good. Like Carson Wentz is a great quarterback. You go around the league and ask these guys, do you want Carson Wentz on your team as your quarterback? Uh, they would all say yes. I mean, they would all say yes. He's that talented of a quarterback. Is he playing up to his standards? No, he's struggling. But here's another counter argument. Jared Goff under Jeff Fisher and Jared Goff under Sean McVay. And I think the issue right now is the scheme and that goes on Mike Grow and Doug Peterson combined, but we saw him thrive in a different system last year. We saw him thrive when we had a legitimate running back, which helped out this offense tremendously. Now I think Josh Adams is capable. We just didn't use him. How are you supposed to know? How are you supposed to open up your playbook with only giving him seven carries? And Wendell Smallwood being in late in the game, I, I just it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The coaching staff needs to be better. The, the quarterback play has to be better. He's staring down Ertz. All right, so he's staring down Ertz consistently. The defense knows that. The defense understands that. Alshon Jeffrey with a couple targets. Actually, he had more targets than the others, but Nelson Aguilar with three. Golden Tate with three. It's so tunnel vision to one guy, it's affecting the entire offense. Last year, we saw Wentz go up to the line of scrimmage, read the defense, kill, kill. Where is that? We haven't seen that all year long. This isn't the Carson that we saw last year. I still have faith that he's our guy. I still have faith that he's our franchise quarterback, but... He's, he's not having the best season this year, and I think that does also go in with the system. The system isn't working. The fact that we don't commit to the run is a problem because it, it closes our playbook, and, you know, that goes on the coaching staff. It goes on Carson Wentz, and the fact of the matter is it goes on some, some injuries as well. But I hate the fact that we lose the run game. Doug Peterson gets pass happy all the time. And here, here's another thing on Doug, all right? So last year against the Carolina Panthers, we go for two after a penalty was on an extra point where we nailed the extra point, but there was a penalty and moves the ball closer. We take the point off the board and we go for two. And he claims, oh, I would never not go for two there. It's too obvious to go there. The percentages are in your favor. That's exactly what happened to go win the football game in Dallas. Now, I'm not criticizing him for kicking the extra point and keeping it. I get it. Now, I, I see both sides. But if he goes out and says that last year, that there's no reason why we wouldn't go here. It's 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 a obvious, dead, easy answer. We are going for it here. It makes too much sense. Why not against Dallas? I was texting my buddies. Do you think we go for two? Do you think we go for two? Because that's, that's the Doug Peterson play there. Go for two, get the win. So he, he pulled back from what he normally would do. His counter argument in the post-game conference was, there was still a minute and a half left. They still had two timeouts. Well, what does that change? We tied the game up. 
They still had a minute and change left with two timeouts. It doesn't change anything. His one argument to that was, well, if it was a fourth down, they'd punt it. So instead of having, giving them four opportunities, we're limiting them to three and saying, let's go take the, the, the coin flip chance, which we all know did not go in our favor. You also have to factor in when you go for two there, our defense is gassed. They're gassed. They've been on the field for so long. So you're saying you're you're telling your defense, hey, shut out this last minute and a half, and then if you have to, we need you on defense in overtime. It seemed like going for two there was a pretty easy answer when you break it down and and weigh your other options out. You gotta be a smart thinker on your feet. I'm kinda stunned that Doug Peterson elected to not go for it. That's what he does. That's his thing. The ballsiness. I wanna get to the defense. First off, I ripped Sidney Jones after the game, and I was very emotional. But I know he was injured. I understand that he was injured, and he was playing on. One, I don't think he's as good as we valued him. Two, if he is injured, man, this guy can't stay healthy. He is always, always injured. So I have to keep that in check and and put that in perspective. So Jim Schwartz's defense... Our defense played good. We created three turnovers. There were consistent three and outs offensively, which kept them on the field. But there is something flawed to me in this scheme. Jim Schwartz's scheme is somehow flawed, and I'm trying to figure it out. Because you can make the argument that last year it worked. When we were scoring points, his system worked, his scheme worked. But how come every... Like, Every single team we play, I feel, has this career high. Even in the Super Bowl, Tom Brady throws over 500 yards. Yes, we outduel him, we outbox him, we outmatch him, and we win. But numbers-wise, his scheme just allows an obnoxious amount of yards. 455 for Dak Prescott. 576 total on the day. And we were on the field for 45-plus minutes. Yes, some of that is on the offense for going three and out. All the time. But I also think some of that is due to the scheme because it allows you to play soft coverage. It allows teams to keep drives going and sustain and sustain drives and just allows other offenses to stay on the field because it's like you just let them take chunk, 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 chunks, and then we're amazing in the red zone. Which sounds great in your head. It sounds great, but there is a flaw in this system. I mean, I said this, right? 455 for Dak Prescott. This is when the defensive coordinator needs to use his brain, right? Amari Cooper had over 300 of those yards. Yet we have a a hamstringless Sidney Jones out there who's getting absolutely waxed. Or a Ballsby out there with no help over the top. Use the brain. Why would you think that would be effective in in that chance, in that spot? Why would that work? There is a flaw in this system. There is. With this personnel. I mean, even last year when we were healthy, they were 500 plus yards in the Super Bowl. It's just the fact that we outmatched them offensively. But it's not working this year. So to stay with it when it's not working, we saw we saw Marcus Mariota play great against it. We saw Ryan Fitzmagic throw over 400 yards on us. We just watched Dak Prescott, the guy we make fun of every single week, obliterate. Even though our defense did play well, right, and gave us a chance, I I can't not look at these numbers and say, there is an issue here. There is an issue. How do you expect to win a football game allowing 455 yards thrown and, and almost 600 yards? I, I just, I can't get that out of my head. There is some type of problem with the scheme out of Jim Schwartz. There is. And I don't want, I, I, I can't stop thinking about it. There are fans out there that say, how can you say that? The defense played great. You're right. The front four played amazing. Rasul Douglas played great. We're on our 7th, 8th, and ninth cornerbacks. But his system allows teams to do this all the time. And you can make the argument that it worked last year, but I just I can't get over the fact that it doesn't make sense and you can't win football games allowing that many yards. You can't. 
And I know it goes on some of the offense for going three and out, but I also think a, a, a factor of it is allowing the soft coverage keeps drives alive, and it, it puts the opposing offenses on the field for longer periods of time. I forgot to mention this when we were talking about Carson Wentz and the offense with the no creativity. The RPOs. The RPOs make, make no sense. They don't make any sense for Carson Wentz. That was the Nick Foles thing. Why are we doing RPOs? Why? Why? There are so many questions for me with this coaching staff. I think the system is terrible offensively. I think that's a, a major issue and a huge concern moving forward for next season. We have to address it. There are There's just so many issues, but when, my takeaways from this is we lost the run game, and I knew that was going to happen. Carson Wentz doesn't look the same. The offensive scheme isn't the same, and I can't get over James Schwartz's defensive scheme. To me, it just doesn't make sense. That's pretty much your whole team. <laughs> it's pretty much your whole team. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.